Hey guys, welcome back to Cards and Comics, and today I've got the biggest, most epic mail day I've had all year. I'm going to guarantee it. This is my um, take. If I were at the Dallas Card Show, or a card show, this is what I would have liked to have bought, or... If I was there, this is the kind of things I would have purchased and had a huge and epic show. So I didn't get to go to the show, so I went ahead and bought cards from various sources, mostly eBay. And this is what my card show would have looked like if I was at Dallas and these cards would have been there. I would have bought these cards. And uh, just give you an idea of what I would have purchased. Now, I think there is a Luca in here, so maybe that's... One thing that I'm similar with um, the pe folks who went to Dallas because it seems like a lot of modern basketball. And I will say this is that it is weirdly, uh, uh, it's weird to me. Weirdly is not, I don't think a word. Um, it's odd to me that so many of these uh, modern YouTube folks are so obsessed with modern basketball because and haven't really dabbled that much into either vintage or anything outside of 2017 to present cards. It's just it's just odd to me that we haven't uh, seen kind of more of an evolution, but um, I'm here to give you the other side of collecting maybe. Here is a 1978 Tops Johnny Bench. And this card is cool because I don't have it. Um, and that makes every card I don't have cool because I want every card. Um, well, especially the Hall of Famers. Um, so I just think it's a cool card. I always like the National League logos, like the All-Star logos, when Tops got kind of um, interesting where they just said, look, we're not going to make special All-Star cards anymore. We're just going to just put a logo on the card. So there we go. We have the 78 Tops Johnny Bench. PSA 8. So starting out with kind of a cool Hall of Famer. I give that a 1970s uh, thumb, two thumbs up there for a 70s Johnny Bench that I don't have. Very cool. And hopefully we don't have the same audio issue. When I run my headphones into my phone, I seem to have a lot more audio issues. But um, it's hard for me not to move my head, so I just use my uh, phone audio. It's just a lot more terrible so hopefully we don't see the same issues we saw in the last video because once i open everything it's hard to recreate the effect of me opening everything Let's show you everything now here is another big card so this is the first epic card of the break whereas this is just a tiny little um, nibble of what's coming this is like you know the big fish so this is one of the big cards so it is a PSA 8 75 tops George Brett and if you saw in my video for my 70s set or sorry my 70s cards I have the mini in an 8 but I do not have the actual 75 base or regular in an 8 but I have the Opeachy I think in a 7 so I have the Opeachy and the Mini, but not the Base. So now I've got the Base, the Mini, and the Opeachy. So I have the trifecta of George Brett rookie cards now. And that makes me weirdly happy um, that I've got um, you know such, um, such a um, fun um, set of cards here. I'm just straightening my camera a little bit. Well, OCD there. Um, all right. So that's the first big card. This card has really just skyrocketed in value. And now I think it's, you know, it's part of the whole grouping of cards. It's, you know, really uh, gone nuts, but it's still, you know, what I'm saying, it's one of the targeted cards. So, you know, and, and these, um, how these guys have targeted cards and, and, and really, um, push certain years and certain players and certain cards um, higher than others. Um, this is definitely one of the cards that was targeted. So 
again, I think it's it's a great card. So I don't mind owning it. I know that it, I paid like a lot compared to what it, um, um, you know, um, was worth you know, a couple years ago. So it doesn't really scare me because I, I do think George Brett rookie cards are um, kind of um, 70s royalty, you know. It's one of those 70s cards that you always wish you had more of. And here we go. Here is another batch of 70s cards that I think we all wish we had more of. Now, we just opened the 75, Brett, and we all agree the 75, Brett, is awesome sauce. And so here is some 7s. Now, I don't collect many 77s, but I do think that these are some special ones. So I went ahead and made an exception. So here's a 76, Brett. And a seven. Now I have this card in an eight, and you know you've heard my spiel about I usually don't have doubles, but now this is a special ex um, exemption. I thought this was going for a good price, so I went ahead and grabbed it. Um, but this card is really, really rare in a um, seven or eight grade. It's it's not available at all in those grades, and. You know, having more than one is pretty cool. Now, here is a 74, uh, number six. This is one of the Hank Aaron special cards. And um, I just, you know, I don't have the full set of these cards. And so I just saw it hanging out there for like, you know, a pretty good price. So I picked it up. So, um, yeah, a little glare over there. So I'm trying to stay out of the glare zone here. And there's a 74. And then the last card um, is um, a card that, you know, I continuously picked up in 7, 7, 5. Not many 8s. I'm definitely never had an 8, 5, or 9. But here you go. Um, you know, one of my favorite, you know, cards of all time, the 75, Nolan Ryan. And again, this is like one of those cards that, you know, I think it's just, I, I love the pink and purple combination, the uniform, the pose. It's just, just such, such a cool 70s card. And it's a seven, so it's not going to break the bank. But again, when you hit it, you know, in this kind of grouping of cool 70s cards, um, it just kind of makes sense. And I, I didn't kind of plan the packages just to be open this way, but, you know, my love of 70s cards is still very very evident, uh, you know, very, very much in play. And um, they have a very special place in my heart. And I think, you know, in the video, I try to convey the fact that, you know, 70s cards and vintage for me was all I could afford, you know, um, when I was, you know, coming up and, you know, still, you know, working on my career and getting where I'm at today. And I think, um, you know, just, you know, the grouping of cards from the 70s, you know, it's just one of those things that, I'll always hold a special place in my heart. And uh, so, yeah, I just love picking up those 70s cards. So. And these are good ones. These are ones that you want to have uh, multiples of, or in some cases, like the bench, the first time I ever had that card. All right, another card going back in time quite a bit more is this card. And this card probably won't make a lot of sense. <laughs> context of this grouping um but here it is it's a set it's a 34 and i say 74 34 gaudi uh frank hogan psa 5 and i i pick up gaudi's diamond stars when i get it you know if i see him at a, at a fairly low price i think five is a really good grade for the 30 card and so i always pick up um, these, if they're at a five or a six, I mean, I think that's really good grades for these cards. Now this card is very clean. You can see it is, you know, well centered, great color. Um, just one of those cards that I think has a lot of eye appeal. And, um, you know, again, I'm slowly putting the set together and, um, you know, it, for me, it's a, it's a really cool card and, uh, you know, nice clean back and i just think these cards are just fun i think people kind of sleep on um you know how rare some of those cards are in, in these kind of grades i mean 
you know, I would be shocked if that card has more than the, you know, maybe one or two hundred uh, in in this uh, greater. Um, you know, so even though the 34 Gaudi set's available more than it used to be, um, I still think, you know, fives are tough. So that is the end of, I call, the normal cards. And so now I've got two really big packages that I've got. So these are the bigger, more awesome <laughs> pickups. Now, not every card in here is going to be awesome. Um, but, you know, these are going to be higher than average. And then... Uh, the second package I'm going to open here is going to be pretty much uh, all awesome. Uh, very little filler. Um, so I'm stacking up multiple packages here. And uh, so this is definitely going to have some, you know, interesting mix of cards. And uh, this package is definitely uh, very indicative of how I collect. Uh, so this package is my example of how I shouldn't collect, but I do. The next package is going to be how I should collect and stick to the plan. So this package is definitely me going off the rails and just buying cards because I think they're cool. The next package is me staying focused and actually completing sets and, and furthering my collection the way it should. So we'll start out here with the first card up, which is a Prism Joe Burrow rookie. And um, I don't, I think I have maybe one of these. So this is just me building inventory and, and cards like that, taking the shows, maybe getting graded. Next up is a Luca Prism Raw. Now I haven't looked at this card. I just opened it up. And I'm going to look to see first with my eyes over here, closer to where I'm at and then kind of on camera, you know, is there actually any huge... It's hard to see with a little bit of glare. Um, I, I think it looks pretty good. I mean, I don't think it's, you know, a terrible card off the bat. <laughs> uh, and it, it's not, you know, you know what I mean. I, I don't see any huge red flags right off the bat. And we'll see. I'll, I'll open it up and look at the card. I'm sure it has some scratches and, you know, prism -y type stuff. But it's centered enough, I think. Um, and I don't see any major corner dings right off the bat. So I think this is definitely also indicative of kind of the market today is that people have just given up grading cards. They're just like, like I can't get a PSA, SGC cards are kind of bringing, you know, um, you know, not close to what PSA. In fact, in some cases, SGC cards in the right and will bring below raw, you know, graded uh, prices. So I think you're seeing some kind of frustration in the market where they're just like saying, look, you know, these cards should be graded to get max value. I can't get the cards graded, so I'm just going to sell them raw, get some money out of them and move on. And um, and so, you know, for me, who I grade, but very slowly and over time, um, so I don't care if I grade it today or tomorrow. Uh, I'll sell it at a show raw if I can make money on it, or I'll grade it if you know if the cards continue to go up. Um, uh, next up, thirty-three D Long Fred Lindstrom, <laughs> and uh, I really like this set. So I'll just throw it out there. I really, really like this set. This is like one of my all-time favorite sets. I think this is maybe the second D Long I've ever or I, I own today. I love the Garrick. I mean, I just you know the set, the Pepper Martin card in this set is just awesome looking uh so i just you know this is one of those sets i love and you know and it's, he's a pirate and so i, I can justify it, it as a, a pirate collection uh pickup but i just love the set and it doesn't really go with the uh, lucas and joe burrow cards but it definitely um fits my pirate collection very well and i love these older cards because you know, uh, I didn't, sh you know, sh on this Frank Hogan, you know, this old flip, this kind of weird dot matrix um, printing on the card. And then this one, um, even though it's a newer grade, the, you know, I, the slab's just covered in goo. I should, probably shouldn't be touching it, but it, it just feels like it's been, you know, sitting out in someone's mantle for like you know, 10 years, just collecting dust. All right, next up is a card that definitely is a cult, is makes sense for my collection and 
these cards are really, really pretty, really shiny. That's the Stadium Club um, Power Zone from 95. This is a nine. And uh, you can just see that these cards are really nice. And I think, you know, I, I love Stadium Club. I've said it before in my trout, trout videos that the, my, some of my favorite trout autos are from Stadium Club. And, you know, just these cards are just really overlooked for how nice they are. And that's the great thing about when you collect a lot of these inserts from the 90s. Um, you know, not everything that looks great is super expensive. There's cards that just are killer, and uh, you can get them for 10, 20 bucks. And Griffey's and Thomas is still on. And I think Jordan's kind of gone out of the stratosphere for anything that's shiny and die cut. Um, so, you know, but Griffey still has some shinies and die cuts that are really cheap. And this is prime time Griffey time. You know, this is 95. So this isn't like an end of career type insert. You know, this is definitely one of his cool you know, years that you would want to have from his you know, prime. Um, and last but not least, uh, this card uh, I got, you know, I love, um, you know, um, you know, in the Syracuse area. And, you know, and this card does have some damage to it. So that's, you know, I got a good deal on it. Um, and the card isn't damaged, but the holder is. So it is Aaron Judge, 17, Tier 1. And I don't know if you can see it. But you can see the holder has got a chip out of it. And so this brought this card, you know, to me way down in value. He's having a good year. and um, But it's an on-card auto from a rookie year from Judge. You can see the rookie logo. It's still a beautiful card. The card's not damaged, and it's just the holder. And, um, you know... Ain't over 10 of eBay people are like, oh my God, the holder's damaged. But to me, again, you know, if Judge continues to be great and, you know, I get the time, I'll, I'll have it reholdered. I don't, I'm not worried about it. Um, but I do know why people would get, you know, because you can't flip it immediately or you're going to have to take a d discount because so many people, you know, like I, I told you about at the card show when the guy was like, you know, he, he wanted my 2016 Bowman Chrome Vlad. PSA 10. And he's like, Hey man, this holder's got a scratch on it. I'm like, not really. I said that you can just rub that out. He's like, yeah, but you know, I had an eBay return. So I need at least 10, 20% off for that card or something. You know, I was like, yeah, I'm not giving you a 20% discount on a card just because it has a, you know, like a, a small little scratch on the back that you can probably rub out, you know, using some alcohol. You know, and but that's you know that's that's a mentality today is that if if everything's not perfect, you got to give a twenty percent, thirty percent discount. And um, you know, I, I just think that's to me. I, I can you know, um, I get it. You know, if you if you you know wanted to rehold or something because it was damaged, I understand. And that judge card is damaged, so that's a very different story. But you know, um, I would not you know take a card like that to show. I would you know. Um, try to get a reholdered or just sell a raw and um you know pop it out of the psa holder because it's a good grade a nine on a card like that you gotta remember that these cards are that thick you know thicker card and these cards are definitely tougher to grade because of that thicker card so a nine in this in the card like this is really actually a really good grade um and it's just a pretty card i mean i think tier one autos you saw my trout video um, you know, they are definitely, um, some of the nicer, um, insert cards that are out there. Now this is the, um, so that's the, how I shouldn't collect. That's me kind of just going through and buying stuff because I think it's cool. Um, now I did get, you know, one a card from my pirate collection and a Griffey card. That's all really, really good. Now here is cards that, you know, fit into my actual, um, bulk of my major collection. So, um, you know, this will be a much more, um, in line with, you know, how I should probably be building my collection and, and not paying attention to some of these, um, you know, I don't say modern cards, but just cards, a little more volatility. And also like, you know, buying a Luca card right now is probably maybe not, you know, the best idea in terms of just the fact they're probably maybe have a little bit more to go in dropping. All right. So first package. All right. So we'll start with 
so th th these are all going to be fun. Um, and um, again, this is this is exactly what I would buy if I was at a card show that was you know had great vintage cards. And you know, we'll start with a '73 Hank Aaron 8.5. We'll start out with a really cool card right off the bat. And um, this card is really well-centered. It's not perfect, but it's it's pretty nice. Now, if you just saw my last video, I talk about 8.5s. And so my next analysis will be Hank Aaron, uh, Clemente, and, and Mantle. And to do my similar analysis I did on, on, on Willie Mays, I'm very confident I'm going to get a very similar result. So I know that these 8.5s are just rare grades because PSA just doesn't grade them as much as they should. Uh, for whatever reason, you know, they don't give out the 8.5 grade. So this card is um, probably not going to be overly rare because it's towards the end of his career. But this is going to be a, a pretty good card in terms of pop report. And, um, I, and it's just a really, really nice card. I need it for my set. And so that all works out really nice in the end. Next up. Another card for my set, and uh, the theme is going here. So, 70 tops, Hank Aaron, 8.5. I've had this card many a time um, in an 8, and I've never had an 8, 5, or 9, and so I just typically, you know, for these 70s cards, I just have it in my head that, you know, unless it's an 8, 5, I would just, you know, keep upgrading until I got one, and so I, I have one. The 70, I think, is pretty tough. I think when I go back, and my estimation is, is that this card is going to be, um, sorry, uh, that this card is going to be uh, pretty low on the pop report. I think we're going to see that it's not as easy to get an 8.5 as you think it, it might be, you know, based on the fact there's a lot of 70s uh, in the pop report. Um, but I think the 8.5 here is going to be 15, 20 maybe. Um, maybe maybe lower um, compared to maybe 30 for this card. Um, just my guess, based on the uh, sorry, yeah, the Willie Mays analysis. So, uh, but again, two 8.5s, and I think that um, and you've seen on my channel, I haven't, you know, I think I said in one of my last videos, you can't always have Hank Aaron cards, you know, in every every break. Well, I finally have some Hank Aaron cards and. Uh, these two are A5s, and that's exactly what I want to collect. So again, you know, I'm very excited to have these cards because it's it's exactly what I want to collect and the grades I want to collect. And next up is another card. So I'm slowly getting my mantles in. This card was just too nice to pass up. It's a 67 mantle, which is, in all honesty, not my favorite mantle. Um, I, I think it's really aesthetics for me because it's, you know, it's a headshot, which isn't you know, always good or bad. You know, I'm not going to say every headshot's terrible, but it's a headshot. At least he has a hat on. You know, I hate the the hatless headshots. Um, but the reason I never really like this card is just it's so, um, you know, it's so like almost monochromatic because you've got the blue background, the white face, the the white jersey. It's very washed out looking usually. And so you don't have a lot of contrast on this card. So it just, it's never really been that visually appealing for me. And the 67 set itself is a little plain. So it's not the prettiest top set. But this card is nice. And you can see it's not perfectly centered, but it's 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 pretty pretty darn good. Back-wise, um, it's just a mediocre back. I would say not perfectly centered, but not tons of toning. Not bright green, you know, that lime green you sometimes get. All in all, I think this card is is you know very nice um, card and to seven five, and it's another mantle for the collection. So again, you know that's the kind of card I, I need to be getting. I need to get uh, the mantle cards that I don't have, the maze cards, and and kind of pit those collections to to bet a little bit, you know, or at least just keep moving you know forward on them. Um, you know, I get very distracted, and I know we all do when we collect, but this is, uh, you know, these are the, you know, to me, these are the best cards to be collecting. Now, again, not every card was going to be a Mantle or Mace or Aaron card, but here is, again, a card I picked up because you saw how much I love Opeaches, and this is uh, a Davy Lopez uh, Opeachy rookie card from 73. Um, I just like these, and I love the 73 um 
uh, cards like this because of just the French on the front. Because Tops usually didn't pit French on the front unless the card had some some flavor text, and so it's just cool to see it on the front. And obviously, you get you get it on the back a little bit too. Um, but just you know, a cheap card I picked up because I just love OPG cards, and you know, I thought that was really cool. Now back to the Hank Aaron show. Uh, this isn't an 8.5, and this is just an 8. However, um, I just thought it went for a good price, and I just wanted more cards uh, like this in my collection. Um, am I going to spec and hold on these kind of vintage cards? You know, I, I'm going to probably pick them up whenever I get a chance at, at a price I think is fair. And, you know, again, I think uh, I could have picked up for what I paid for these two Prism rookie cards, I could have picked up another 60s Hank Aaron, right? That's how I think about it. Um, so it's diversification. It's like, yeah, these cards could go up. This card's going to be steady Eddie. It's gone up, but it's gone back down a little bit, and it's going to be up and down uh, right now with how the market is. But to me, it is about diversification. I, I if I If I buy too much of one thing, my brain just goes nuts. It goes like, you, all you've been buying is Hank Aaron cards. You can't buy 40 Hank Aaron cards. You got to buy something else. And that's how my brain works. And so like I eventually I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, I'm going to buy something else. <laughs> and I go out and buy something else. And, 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 and I feel better because my collection isn't just so focused on one thing. And a lot of people are exactly opposite. You know, they're going, oh my God, I can't believe I'm not, you know, buying all of just, just one card. You know, when I see people posting, like I bought 85 of this one card and that's all I've been buying is this one card. Uh, my brain goes nuts. I'm like, I can't, you know, uh, collect that way. I, I got to have uh, some variety. But it's a pretty good eight. It's not, you know, perfectly centered. And so I think it's just a, uh, you know, very typical for a PSA 8 Hank Aaron. So it's not, you know, awesome for the grade, but it's not terrible. The last two cards are really just cards I've been meaning to pick up for a long time. Um, Joe Torrey, I don't have a lot of Joe Torrey cards and, you know, him being in the hall of fame now. And, and he was a great player. I mean, I, you know, every year you look at it, I mean, you know, he had 36 home runs, 101 RBIs and hit 318 that year. I mean, you know, the guy was really good. I mean, you know, that's three or two consecutive years of, of 30 home runs here. And, you know, just, you know, I mean, 321, 298, 293, you know. Uh, the guy just, you know, was a good player and, you know, to be this good of a player, I mean, and, and MVP and, and then be a, an amazing manager. I mean, I think his cards are kind of undervalued. I mean, uh, he's one of the, one of the few managers like Ted Williams and Ted Williams was not a great manager, but he was an awesome player. You know, um, Frank Robinson, you know, was an awesome player. Dusty Baker was a good player, just like Joe Torre. Uh, but Joe Torre was actually, I think a better player than Dusty Baker. Um, so again, and you know, to put that combo together, one player is pretty rare. And the last but not least, last card for today, card I really love, and I think, um, you know, they've started to sell these cards. Uh, all euchre cards have just, you know, gone nuts in my opinion. You know, they used to be kind of like, you know, cheap, you know, as cheap as a Hall of Fame uh, card would be in a set. Now they're definitely mid tier in pricing. And kind of moving up because he doesn't have a lot of cards. I think he has a 62, a 63, 64. Uh, I think it's 65. So he, yeah, see, so his, you know, yeah, so his, he goes from 62 to 67, I think. I think his last card is 67. So he, you know, just doesn't have a lot of cards. Um, and, you know, and he's just popular. And, you know, he's one of those guys that, you know, um, he, he reminds me a lot of Ron Sano because, you know, Sano was an announcer um, and just, you know, a Hall of Fame. You know, Sano was a Hall of Fame ball player just as, as a ball player, not as an announcer, whereas Euchre made it as, a, as an announcer. Um, but, you know, Sano cards are, are very similar to Euchre in that they're more popular and sell for more than you, you would think. And a lot of people view it as kind of like the lowest of the low tier Hall of Famer. So. So that's it. So, you know, um, just a recap, I, I want to show you the kind of pull the Hank Aaron cards out because um, that was really the focus of the video and the and the Mickey Mantle. So, so the focus of today was, you know, 
the Hank Aaron cards. Yeah, so I got the two 8.5s and then the 68, and then we have the Mickey Mantle. So that is the focus of today. That's why today was the biggest, most epic mail day I've had in a long time. That's a long video, but, you know, I'm here to share my collection and, you know, hopefully you enjoy it and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.